Professor Jeff Wilkerson here with an introduction to the rest of the DC Circuits Lab for the Classical Physics 2 students, Physics 182 students here at Luther College. So we've already done a couple of weeks. We got improved measurements with new meters last week, and that's going to change a little bit what we're going to do going forward. So here's what we got. Uh, we got about, we've got three parts left coming up. We're going to simplify the second part where it says check for internal resistance to see if you can measure the internal resistance. We're just going to do that with 1D battery. Okay, so what I want you to do with 1D battery, replace the external power supply we've been using, put a single D cell battery in the circuit, and use that to provide a potential difference across uh, your resistor or network of resistors that you're going to use. And try it with different combinations. You probably want pretty low uh, resistances if you want to try to measure the internal resistance of the battery. But you, So you'll have your resistor network that's out here. You will hook your battery up like that and provide the current and you will measure the current through there. Okay, that's it's as good as that. You will measure the effective if you treat this that you treat this battery as a um, you know as a as a as a three volt, one and a half volt battery, you will you will check to see what the effective resistance is of this entire circuit. And so you'll see what happens. To the potential drop. Another way to think about this is what happens to the potential drop across these resistors as you change what these resistors are. As you change the load, uh, we would call this. So there's your resistance load. As you change the load, does the um, potential drop across there change? If the potential drop across there changes, remember we're modeling that as some sort of V minus IR, where R is the internal resistance. You remember we give that a little R in there. Uh, to say that's the internal resistance. So you're going to model that as, as, as this, and to say that's V uh, that you get across this entire circuit. I don't want you to try it for the external power supply, and we don't need to do it for batteries in series. One battery, one time, uh, a few, several different circuits out here. Try enough of these different circuits to see if you can tell what this internal resistance is, how this voltage across this across the terminals of the battery is changing depending on the load that's out here, depending on the current that's flowing through it. Okay, so I want you to do that modeling to check for the internal resistance of a single D cell battery. That's it. That's part two of the lab. It uh, shouldn't take you too terribly long to complete that. For part three of the lab, we're doing RC timing, and we're going to have to go back and use the Logger Pro uh, probes in order to do this measuring. So we're going to go back and we're going to measure the potential difference in the current uh, or one or the other. We could probably just do the current. Measure the current with the logger pro um, with the logger pro materials that we have. But what I think we can do now with the meters that we have, um, so so what we can do now with the meters that we can have we have is that we have those three larger resistors on the board. So this is part three. This is the RC timing part. And for the RC timing part, we have those three larger resistors that we didn't work with. But we now have enough sensitivity with our new meters that I think we can measure the resistances of those resistors the same way we've been measuring the others. So I'd like for you to precisely measure uh, the R value for those three large resistors that you have there. And I forget what they are. I think they, they range from 22 kilo ohms to 100 kilo ohms. Um, they're large you know, there is no absolute standard for large in a resistor, uh, but they're large relative to the 10 ohms, 50 ohms, and 100 ohms that we've been measuring. So those, with bigger R values here, they're going to give you longer time constants and allow us to measure these, uh, this capacitor that's on the board much uh, better. So what I'd like for you to do is measure these three resistances using Ohm's law, uh, measuring the current and the, the potential across the resistor, uh, and various potentials as you, as you, as you change that external potential, uh, measure the current, and, and get an R value as, as precisely as you can for here, for these resistors, and get your uncertainty in that R value. Once you have that R value and your uncertainty, then you can use that in here as you charge or discharge a capacitor. Uh, so, so you have that big capacitor that's on the board, or you have that capacitor that's on the board, it's an average size capacitor on the board. You will charge and discharge it, and you will measure the E, uh, the e folding time. You will measure tau is equal to RC from this e to the minus t over tau that you have right there. And we can talk about various ways to process the data to make that simpler, to make that easier to do. But what we want to do is, is know these really well 
and we're going to use each of these resistors in turn, one, two, three, uh, to, to determine the time constant. And then if we know the resistance value well, we can calculate C from that. And we're going to use those three C values to see uh, what we think our uh, capacitance is and what the uncertainty in that capacitance is, and if it matches what's printed on the capacitor. So that's what we're going to do with the RC timing. Uh, you can you can do that. Um, I think I think we can do that with combination series and, and parallel combinations right here. But probably we're just limited by the uncertainty in each one of these. We're not getting independent measurements there. So we're just going to make those three resistors in series with the capacitor and, and measure our uh, time constant like this. Uh, we'll talk more about that, how to do that in Logger Pro. Uh, I think we'll go back to just using the current, um, <clears throat> the Logger Pro current meter in place of the AM meter that we've been using now uh, this past week. And, and we'll, we'll use that to uh, measure. Uh, make a nice graph that we can fit, uh, do an exponential fit to. But we'll try it both ways when we do the analysis, data analysis. We'll do an exponential fit to the data, we'll take a logarithm of the data and do a linear fit, and then we'll talk about how to determine, that'll be our last new statistical idea for the semester, I think, um, is to say we'll talk about how to determine the, the uncertainty in fit parameters uh, for a linear fit, and, and we'll, we'll practice that here. So anyway, that's what we're going to do with the RC timing part, each of those three resistors. Then there's the light bulb on the board, and we want to be careful about the light bulb. We'll talk more about this as we get there. We don't want to burn it out. We don't want to overpower it, so we want to make sure we're, we're not uh, putting too much current through it. But you want to measure, uh, go back and treat it like one of the resistors, and measure its uh, resistance, measure its resistance as a function of voltage or current that you're, you're putting, current you're putting through it or voltage you're putting across it. And to say, so here's the current that's through it, here's what the resistance is. And that what you will find with the light bulb filament, even if it's not glowing, don't if you turn it up so much that it's glowing, you have a chance to burn it out. Well, be careful about that. So even if you don't see light coming from the light bulb filament, you will be able to measure the current and 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 voltage and get a resistance value. And you will see that as you run more current through it, unlike the resistor that was designed to have the the resistance stay as stable as possible as you run current through it and heat it up, you are in fact trying to heat up this filament and this light bulb and make it glow. And so you will see as it heats up, you will see the resistance change pretty dramatically in there. And what you will be measuring is remember you've got your rho is equal to, to rho naught times one plus alpha t, um, alpha delta t. Um, and so what, you're, what you'll be measuring is uh, this delta t uh, alpha delta T. And so you'll be measuring how what, what you think your value for alpha delta T is as a function of current that's running through uh, your light bulb. And so we'll be looking to see what we think the temperature of the light bulb is as it as it run more and more current through there. So really we've got this alpha term that's out front, but then we're going to go make a model of that alpha term. That's up to you to go do a little research and say what would be a typical alpha term for something that might be a light bulb filament. Let's start with tungsten and just say, what if it's a tung pure tungsten filament? It's not a pure tungsten filament because then it wouldn't last very long. But we can start there and then move off in other directions and try this alpha and get see how much we think alpha might vary and see how much that would change delta T. So we want to we want to make some kind of we want to take the skills that we've developed in this lab, uh, particularly the parts you've already done working with resistors and measuring resistances pretty carefully. And we want to take those skills and apply it to a situation where we're trying to determine what we think the uh, temperature of a light bulb filament is as a function of the current that's running through it. So that's what we got left. We got three parts left for this lab, and we should be able to get these done in the next few weeks uh, pretty cleanly, I think. Uh, one part is measuring the internal resistance of a battery. You may still have a little bit you need to clean up from the other stuff that we've been doing, but we want to get through it and get going. So we're going to measure the internal resistance of a battery by putting different loads across it and seeing if that causes uh, the voltage to change uh, across the poles of the battery due to different currents going through an internal resistance as the model we're building. Then we're going to do RC timing. That's going to require us to backtrack and measure the resistances of three new bigger resistors uh, more carefully and do what we've done in the previous weeks there and take that skill that we developed measuring those resistances, apply it to an RC circuit, do a little bit of new data analysis and figure out what we, the capacitance is and what our uncertainty in that capacitance is. And then we're going to go and apply the skills that we've developed measuring resistances to a light bulb and see if we can understand how the temperature of the light bulb is changing 
as a function of time. So we got a lot to do. We got we want to keep on it. So we're going to try all of this stuff here in the in the next few weeks, and we're going to have fun doing it. So that's what we got for you today. That's our introduction to the remainder of the lab. See you all in lab next Thursday.